Okay, so mm -hmm. one of the things we do here at the Aggressive Progressives is we like to show you the truth uh, 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 and we give you a counter narrative to the establishment news and sometimes it's even in the independent news. Well, this is one of those stories. So last week, The Guardian launched this bogus story. So there's, if you notice the pattern is every couple of weeks or months, they have this huge story. We got Trump. We got him on the, and then it just everything. Smoking oh, gun. Smoking gun. gun. Got, this is the one that's going to end the Trump presidency. And then it all just fades away. It all just put, oh, it was nothing. It was nothing. The dossier, which, oh my God. It was, so um, they did one of these things. So there's this guy named Luke Harding who wrote a book called Collusion, which is all about Donald Trump's collusion with Russia. And when he was interviewed about his book and asked to show evidence, of collusion by Aaron Maté from The Real News, Luke Harding couldn't produce any. And he kept looking like an idiot in that interview to the point where he actually left the interview. And all, if you know Aaron Maté, the guy couldn't be more low key and just asking straight questions. He doesn't raise his voice, he's not like me at all. He's very, uh, and so Luke Harding has been writing one BS story after another about collusion in Russia because he's a grifter and um, We've, and so we've shown you that Aaron Maté has outed him. But when you lie on the behalf of the establishment, there is never a price to pay. Luke Harding is pushing the most wild conspiracy theories, and no one's ever going to call him a conspiracy theorist, even though that's what he is. And he's a propagandist. And so he wrote an article that made its way into The Guardian last week. And here's the article. The article is headlined, Manafort held secret talks with Assange in Ecuadorian embassy. Exclusive, Trump ally met WikiLeaks founder months before emails hacked by Russia were published. So they say, just even in that subheadline, it says emails hacked by Russia. There's no evidence of that. They just now print it as fact. They have no evidence that that happened. None. And uh, they just now, so now it's just fact. That's how propaganda works. You just say it over and over and over, and people just start to, it just starts to seep in. So I read this. So this was reported ubiquitously. This article was re reported in the establishment press and in independent press also, and uncritically reported. And it just goes to show you how establishment propaganda works. And the people who re reported this story uncritically, I have to think. They didn't even read the goddamn article. Because when I read it, and I'm again, C student, dumb jagoff nightclub comedian, I saw right through this article. So there's lots of people who went to much better colleges who are much smarter than me, who read this same article and either turned off their critical thinking skills or didn't care. So I'm gonna just take you through this article and show you how ridiculous it is. So this article claims that Paul Manafort met three times at the Ecuadorian embassy with Julian Assange. Well, let's go through the article and I'll show you how garbage it is. Okay, so Donald Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, held secret talks with Julian Assange inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London and visited around the time he joined Trump's campaign. The Guardian has been told by who? We'll never know. Mm -hmm. We'll never know. Sources have said, sources? What sources? We'll never know. Sources have said Manafort went to see Assange in 2013, 2015, and in the spring of 2016, during the period when he was made a key figure in the Trump's push for the White House. Manafort's first visit to the embassy took place a year after Assange sought asylum inside. Two sources said, which, so now, why don't you just say 40 sources? <laughs> why not say 50 sources? Why not say sauces? Why not say like, sauces? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> You know, like a gravy, a brown gravy. <laughs> Why not say sauce? Two sauces said, and I keep it a pack of each <laughs> It's got the same credibility. Yes. I'm telling you, you know. So I can't think of a sauce or I would say it. I mean, neither. Uh, Tabasco. Hollandaise. Hollandaise, nice. That's a nice sauce. And it's a good sauce. And you just, you just see a dish also, of Hollandaise yeah. being interviewed by Anderson Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> Well, did you or did, did you, you not? see Manafort or didn't you? So going back to this article, <laughs> a separate internal a separate internal document written by Ecuador's Sinane Intelligence Agency and seen by the Guardian list Paul Manafort. So can I just tell you the irony of this? So they're they're talking about they're quoting a document by the intelligence agency of Ecuador, which we've also shown you has been compromised by the 
Goldman Sachs and the banks, and they've taken a payoff and all that stuff. So now they've turned on Julian Assange, right? And so now they're in cahoots with the Western intelligence community, the CIA, the MI6, in getting rid of Julian Assange. So they're in cahoots now. So what's the irony here is that they're now quoting, this Guardian article is quoting an internal document from their intelligence agency in Ecuador about Paul Manafort and the document misspells Paul Manafort's name. How frickin' reliable is this document that misspells his name at beginning? So this is what they're quoting. So go back to me. To it's, it's not like it's like a resume or something important. This is just <laughs> a document. You know, I mean. <laughs> so let's go back to this. A separate internal document written by Ecuador's Sinane Intelligence Agency <laughs> and seen by the Guardian's list, Paul Manafort, as one of several well-known guests. It also mentions Russians. That's amazing. I love it, that. It, this says, it mentions Russians. It doesn't say it, it mentions, mentions it mentions. It was probably Russian dressing. There you go. That's the sauce. That we're talking it's about. Russian dress. Russian. So it doesn't say it mentions Russians were also present or it mentions. It just says it mentions Russians. It could have said no Russians were involved in this, but it mentioned Russians. So, the, so what the Guardian is hoping is, I guess, is that when you read this, you'll just go, oh, um, I'll just ignore that. That that means absolutely nothing. That's what that means. By the way, an idiot like me thinks The Guardian is some kind of reputable yeah. paper because it's in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm like, oh, The Guardian, yeah. these people went to school. Yeah. So you know who else British worked? accents, British accents. British accents. Very credible. Yeah, and so you know who else? Uh, uh, Rupert Murdoch also owns a lot of newspapers in, in Britain. That's true. So, so, so this, I love that. So it also mentions Russians, and that's it. It doesn't say what it says about Russians or what Russians are involved. It just says it also mentions Russians. Oh, so <laughs> what a horrible job of propaganda. And it's like, oh, throw in Russia. Oh, yeah, it also said uh, Russians. What? I don't, I don't know. Don't worry. Just say Russians. <laughs> just say it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just imagine people who re-reported this story uncritically. How the F can you read this story and not be drunk or asleep and still re-report this uncritically? This is crazy. And by the way, this gives Trump credibility. Oh, no because doubt. Because when he says fake, fake news, news, now it lands. Now it lands. Yes. Well, they've been doing this over and over. This whole Russiagate thing is fake news, and that's why it lands when Trump says it. That's right. So according to, again, according to the sources, Manafort returned to the embassy in 2015. He paid another visit in the spring of 2016, turning up alone. Around the time Trump named him at his as his convention manager, the visit is tentatively dated to March. Uh, let me just show you this. Manafort's 2016 visit to Assange lasted about 40 minutes once one source said, adding that he that the American was casually dressed when he exited the embassy wearing sandy colored chinos, a cardigan, and oh, a light colored shirt. Well, that seals it. That seals well, it. Well, that seals it. If, Doesn't it? If you can say how someone was dressed, then it's like, Margaret, they have how he was dressed. It's got to be true. A cardigan? You can't make that up. What is he, a novelist? See, see, you're joking, but it does add an air of, of authenticity. It does. To so it. You, give a you give specificity and a detail, it makes it seem, well, it must be true. They said he's wearing a cardigan and chinos. Except. It was Mr. Rogers. Except that was Mr. Rogers. <laughs> no, except. If you know anything about the Ecuadorian embassy, if you know anything about the UK, the UK is the most surveilled city in the history of the world, right? And especially the Ecuadorian embassy, which not only the CIA has a camera pointed at, but the MI6 and probably dozens of cameras pointed at them. Mm -hmm. And so does every goddamn news agency. And so do other countries have cameras. So there's got to be about, I don't know, right. so 5,000 cameras. There's more cameras pointed at the Ecuadorian embassy than are inside of a camera shop. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead, Eddie. What, what's no, I, right. I mean, I know your point. Where's the footage of Manafort? There's not one. Not one. Manafort, not Fort. This guy Manafort, <laughs> yeah. whoever he is. I don't know. Chino enthusiast. I, Chino you, enthusiast. You can't lie about chinos. You no, really can't. Right. You know, that yeah. detail kind of seals the deal for me. So they, like, this Even whole his article. parents wouldn't lie about <laughs> chinos. <laughs> like, no, this they whole would. article, like, how do you know? Not name any source. Not one source. So now we're indoctrinated mm. to read these articles, and just because they say source, it's reliable. And the reason why people 
will take a BS stories like this and ingest them is because it aligns. It's called confirmation bias. You think Trump is working with the Russians and Assad is all and they're all together and are all in cahoots. And, and so anything you read that confirms your bias, uh, mm -hmm. you go along with. Because By the way, Trump, let me just say yes, this, sorry. because Trump and we've made this point a million times, he excites the lizard brain of a lot of people Oof. and it short circuits their critical thinking skills. So they have a totally different standard when it comes to reporting on this story for on Assange and Russia and Trump as they do for every other story. And so that's the opposite of being a progressive, FYI. Eddie? Oh, I was just gonna say, is this whole Russia, you know, uh, thing, because the the Washington establishment, right? It cannot accept the fact the Democrats yes. cannot accept the fact that they lost. Right. So they still can't they, accept the fact that it's their policies and they cheated, their sellout. And they committed the biggest election fraud in the history of the country in the 2016 primary, which no one talks about. No, no one. And what do they talk about? This made up hoax of a uh, hacking by the Russians and Assange and all this blah 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 blah. blah. And and so this serves many purposes. It serves yeah. a lot of purposes for the CIA. It serves purposes for the military industrial complex and for the Democratic Party and the DNC. And of course, for newspapers and for, for a news outlets, they get Rachel Maddow's got the highest rated news show in the, in the cable right now. And all she does is talk about a conspiracy theory that she has no evidence of. But no one will ever call her a conspiracy theorist because she's lying on the behalf of the establishment. So just like Luke Harding in The Guardian here, just like The Guardian is lying, they'll never be called conspiracy theorists, even though that's what they are of the highest order, because they're doing it at the behest of the establishment, which is why the CIA and the establishment don't say what Trump did is a conspiracy. They call it collusion because they've already made the term conspiracy toxic. So now they're saying it's collusion because they don't want to be called conspiracy theorists. They say it's collusion. Do you see the, the trickery in the words? Stop, Jimmy. <laughs> Just stop it. So I've noticed. <laughs> so Jesus, this show makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, it's just, it's just amazing that, uh, you know, you, you, you're, you're a voice of, of, of reason in this insanity. There's a it's, handful of people who are reasonable about this topic, and that's it. Yeah. And that's it. You see how the Red Scare happened the first time? Everybody goes along with it. So let me just finish this article, right? So they have him casually dressed when he exited the embassy wearing a cardigan and chinos, and, but not one goddamn picture of it, even though it's the most surveilled place in the history of the world. They also don't mention his shoes. They which, don't mention I mean, his shoes. <laughs> So or there's the no color of hole. his eyes. There's He's, a gap. There's a hole there. I know he wears penny loafers. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't they mention it? <laughs> why don't you mention a nice... A bo is he wearing a boat... What do they call boat top Top siders? Top yeah. siders. <laughs> you uh, wear them in the Hamptons. In the way. Hamptons, sure. Uh, visit, no, back to my thing, please. Visitors normally register with embassy security guards and show their passports. <laughs> Sources in Ecuador, however, say Manafort was not logged in. What are the chances? What are the chances they forgot to log in? The most important guy that would make the whole collusion thing happen. Oh my God, and what a bad break of luck for the intelligence community and the bullshitters over at the Guardian. What a bad, they didn't log him in. Well, just, and the, just no, the three times, only the three times, Jimmy. Just the three times. Three times. By the way, Luke Harding left an interview where he was being questioned. So he was being mm -hmm. on Skype. He was being by the Real News. He was being interviewed on Skype. And he just, yeah, he just, he just left his. He goes, okay, that's it. He just unplugged. I'm driving through a canyon. Yeah. <laughs> but you're on Skype, you idiot. You just, he just unplugged and left it. Oh my <laughs> so, <laughs> so not only, I got not only was had a cattle. I got a yeah. What not only was he not, come, not only was he not logged in. They forgot. They just forgot to log in the most important, most consequential guy ever to visit Julian Assange. They forgot to log him in, forgot. And no pictures, not a single picture of the most surveilled building in the history of all mankind. Not one picture of him coming in and out three freaking times. Also, Manafort's passport isn't stamped. So he, <laughs> so everybody's lying. So now the, 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 the immigration people are lying because they didn't stamp his passport. The, the, the guards at the embassy didn't log him in three times and nobody's got pictures, but it definitely happened. And this is what this is the story that was repeated re ubiquitously in the establishment media and even in independent media repeated the story uncritically. And also people found in this story a time to also smear Julian Assange. What has Julian Assange ever done that had to be retracted? Nothing. 
He's never had to retract anything. And he's an award-winning journalist. Okay, WikiLeaks wins awards for their journalism. They've never had to retract anything. And if you really think you care about, if you're going to talk about Jim Acosta for a minute, you should talk about Julian Assange for five hours. And because that's the mm. real threat to freedom of speech. Jim Acosta is not exposing the powerful. Jim Acosta is bread and circus. Mm. Jim Acosta is a self-promoter, a, a self-aggrandizer. And he's part of CNN, which just fired a guy for telling the truth about Israel. So F you and your allegiance to Jim Acosta if you don't talk about Julian Assange. It reveals you to be a fake progressive. Right on. And here's what Caitlin Johnson said about this story. I love she said this in Consortium News. She says, if it wasn't obvious to you last week that there is an unelected power establishment which needs above all else to control the public narrative about what's going on in the world, it should certainly be obvious to you this week. The Guardian hit piece was so spectacularly desperate in its overreaching to advance a narrative which has been used to manufacture support for longtime CIA MI6 agendas. Like what? Like arresting Julian Assange, stopping WikiLeaks, censoring the Internet and subverting Russia that it completely exposed itself as an establishment psyop firm that it is. Mm. Former Guardian employee Jonathan Cook explains that from what he learned while working at the outlet, the most likely explanation is that the editors permitted the article to be published because its anonymous sources came from within an intelligence or defense agency. So imagine, so imagine what they're doing is they're literally what we accuse them of doing is being stenographers to power is what they're doing. So they didn't they didn't um, apply any journalistic standards to this story because their sources were inside the intelligence community and the defense industry. And so they just repeated it like stenographers. So exactly what we said they do, they do. One more thing. So here's more from Jonathan Cook. He said, I worked for The Guardian for a number of years and know well the layers of checks that any highly sensitive story has to go through before publication. In that lengthy process, a variety of commissioning editors, lawyers, backbench editors, and the editor herself, Kath Veneer, would normally insist on cuts to anything that could not be rigorously defended and corroborated. And yet... This piece seems to have been casually waved through, given a green light, even though its profound shortcomings, profound shortcomings, were evident to a range of well-placed analysts and journalists from the outset. That, at the very least, hints that The Guardian thought they had insurance on this story. And the only people who could have promised that kind of insurance are the security and intelligence services, presumably of Britain, the United States, and or Ecuador. So as Glenn Greenwald says, in sum, The Guardian published an article today that it knew would explode into all sorts of viral benefits for the paper and its reporters, even though there are gaping holes and highly sketchy aspects to the story. That's a media pattern we've seen over and over in this story. So, uh, so what's even funny, after all this pushback from people like me, Glenn Greenwald, and people who are actually critical of propaganda instead of repeaters of propaganda, uh, since then, the, the Guardian has gone back to change their headline. So their headline used to say this. This was their headline before. Manafort held secret talks with Assange in Ecuadorian embassy. And now it says this. Manafort's secret talks with Assange in Ecuadorian embassy. Sources say. Oh. They've added sources say. <laughs> so how much time do we have? How much time? Four oh, we got some time left. So um, sources say. Let me just say, go back to my computer for a second. Remember this. This is WikiLeaks. Remember this day when The Guardian permitted a serial fabricator. Luke Harding, to totally destroy the paper's <laughs> reputation. WikiLeaks is willing to bet that The Guardian a million dollars and its editor's head that Manafort never met Assange. Wow. So this, again, I'll, let me throw it to my panel. You know how mm -hmm. I feel about this. You know what's crazy to me is there's a second part to this story. The second part to the story is then Politico then ran an article backing up this article in a weird way. <laughs> so they had, I'll show you, let me, let me just, let me just fast. Well, here's, let me go to Guardian. The source they point to was The Guardian, a not sourced article. Mm. <laughs> it's a real life game of propaganda telephone, and that's what this is. Right, and those stories also stay, remain in, you know, online forever and ever. Even if The Guardian were to go back and retract this, yes. all those stories that 
refer to it. Refer to it, stay forever. Yeah. Forever. So that remains. So then Politico, get this, so this is so, so then you don't think the intelligence agency has, has infiltrated news organizations ubiquitously? Just like, go, go look up a video, go to YouTube and look up the church committee hearings. Because that was all about them exposing the CIA infiltrating all our news organizations. You don't think they're doing that again? Where do you think this article just came from? It came right from the CIA and the MI6 and the Ecuadorian intelligence people who are all working together. And here's another article came right from the CIA and it's in Politico. So if you go to my computer, it says, and this is under law and order. It said, did someone plant a story tying Paul Manafort to Julian Assange? And that's by Alex Finley. So, now, but no, but hang on, Jimmy. So, as you see that headline, you're thinking, oh, Politico's going to expose it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's they're, what I they're, they're, they're using the word plant. There's some truth. They're gonna, they're gonna expose the truth. It's weird. Politico, wow, doing some real journalism, right? Right. Right. Weird. Right. <laughs> weird. But it, it, but the story is written by a guy. If you look, it says Alex Finley. Now, Alex Finley is a fake person. No. Not a real person, Alex Finley. Cardigan, so Lara? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's wearing chinos and topsiders right now. So they do a story. Did someone plant a story tying Paul Manafort? And so what this story is all about is defending Luke Harding. Because Luke Harding is a tool of the CIA, MI6, and the intelligence communities. And he's a stenographer to power. And he's been printing every BS story possible about this. And so now they rush to do a story because now they see how he's being discredited, which will discredit all of the stuff he's done. So now they gotta go save him. So they get a they get a CIA guy under a fake name to then plant a BS story and political runs it. Unbelievable. And, and no one, journalistic standards, no editing, no nothing, Eddie. Well, one thing I don't understand is the CIA planning, this would be an anti-Trump story. Now, isn't the CIA- But Trump wants to get Assange, which makes this so cra even crazier. Right. So let me just finish this, and because we're almost up against a break. And um, so here is how the CIA, fake CIA guy under a fake name in Politico. They admit this. They, they admit they, that they, he's a fake gay. They do. No, nobody yeah. had to expose this. This is a, they, they admitted that they didn't want to run this with anybody's name. Yeah. Oh. But, oh. Uh, you know, his name so attached to it because he's such a Why don't they put secret. anonymous instead of Alex Finley then? Because the casual read will be like, oh, this is Alex well, Finley, yeah. the so, great Alex Finley. So we, we're <laughs> up against a break, and before we go to the break, I just want to tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the, the I'm gonna whatever, I'm gonna so spoiler alert about this article is this fake CIA guy in Politico says Luke Harding got tricked by Russia. <laughs> we'll be right it back. All comes it all around. comes around. Yeah. We'll be right back. Oh you can't make God. this stuff up. This show makes me